Okay, one thing to take note of, um, most of these ply beam boards, we actually kind of design in a little, what we call a glass on leash loop um, into the keel of the board. Since this keel is structural, it's part of the surfboard, um, we see and seed in a hole and you see a little inscription right along here. If we cut along that and leave it in place, we can actually shape it and glass it and that can become our little um, leash loop. Um, and that will get kind of finished up through the glassing process. But if this is something you'd like to use, um, we're going to make sure to cut around that. It takes a little extra time, but it's, um, you know, it's kind of a nice little detail. If you did put blocking in your board for a leash plug, obviously you don't need to use this. But it's just a little extra feature that we built in um, if you like it. So for now, I'm just going to cut a little proud of those lines. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, back here on our leash loop, I sanded this so it's um, a little bit closer to the final shape. Um, we're just gonna leave that until we get to kind of our final shaping and, and sanding steps, and we'll do a little bit of rounding, but otherwise that is good to go. The first step I like to do when we're removing this is we're going to run our saw along our planks to cut this off, but it's much easier to, to make a series of vertical cuts, like kind of like a relief cut. So as we're going, the pieces will kind of pop off. Um, best place to start is any, on any of these little um, notches for our strong backs, because these go all the way down to the planks. Um, I'm going to take a Japanese saw with a fine tooth and just make a cut until I hit this opening. Okay, so I've made my cuts and now I've been working my way along the board with a Japanese saw. And the goal here is to try to take this as close to the planks as I can, but without um, damaging the planks. If my saw starts to cut at an angle and starts to dive into the planks, I can chew up and put little marks in the, in the plywood and that's a little bit hard to get out later on. So it's always better to leave a little ridge that we can take down with a block plane later on. Um, right now is a good time to kind of point out um, if you have a multi-tool, something like this, this is a pretty nice way to go. Uh, makes it a little quicker, but um, it doesn't take very long with the Japanese saw. So I'm going to keep going with this and again, just kind of ride it right along the, the piece that I just cut off and work my way forward. So we've gone along with a saw, we've cut off most of the keel. Um, if you can see it, there's still just maybe an eighth of an inch of plywood sticking up here above our planks, which is perfect. Now what I tend to do is I like to put a weight on the board. This is just a piece of lead. You can use a brick or whatever you've got that's heavy. If it's uh, hard, try to put something underneath it so you don't scratch up your board. But um, I'm going to take a block plane now and I'm going to work my way down and just try to take this down a little bit closer to my planks. Um, once again, I don't want to hit my planks with this tool because it'll put marks in. So I'm going to get it to where I'm comfortable and then I'm going to come back with a piece of wood and some 80 grit or even 60 grit paper and you can take it down a little bit further. So I'm just going to spend a little time with a nice sharp block plane. And once I get this down to just a little bit above the planks, I'm going to finish with just a little piece of paper and blend that into it smooth. Okay, one thing you'll notice uh, that happened here is on one side of the keel, the planks got pushed down a little bit lower than the other side. So where this plank is level with the top of the keel, this one is dropped down just a tiny bit, maybe a 16th. I tend to like to keep it um, flush with the higher surface. If I take this surface down to match this surface, I risk shaping or sanding through the veneer on this plywood and exposing some of the grain below the surface, which uh, can look a little funny. It's not structurally much of an issue, but 
um, it'll change the way the wood looks. So I think it's better to bring it down to the higher surface. We can fill this little area with epoxy when we go to glass the board. Okay, this is another area that I messed up a little bit on. As I was taking my block plane and shaping down the plywood, the corner of the blade was hanging a little bit low and it dug into my planks just a little bit. So um, it didn't go through the outside veneer. So I think I can kind of smooth this out. And in the end, when it's glassed, it'll all blend. But that's a good thing to kind of pay attention to. Make sure as you get closer, you know, maybe I should have switched over to sandpaper a little bit sooner, but just watch that corner of your blade that you're not digging into the plywood as you shape this down.